When I first started playing Total War, I was very curious how other players seem to be putting together absolutely beautiful formations and then issuing commands on the go with their armies, which seem to just be completely at ease. So I've made up my mission since then to search up the most important commands to issue in this game that actually works all the way from all titles post Rome 2. Now, most of the commands will work actually um, on a lot of the titles before Rome 2, but because of some of the quality of life improvements and whatnot that happened post Rome 2, well, you'll find that this video is directly relevant to those titles. We're going to be using Warhammer 2 as our uh, as our, as our our purpose builder over here, if you want to call it that. And we're going to break this video down into four different sections on, on Army Commands. Start off with section number one, unit selection. Section number two, grouping. Section number three, moving those units and groups. And then section number four, the different modes for those groups as well. So with that said, I'm going to do my absolute best to give you the 30 most important commands that I've found while playing this game starting off with unit selections some of this perhaps you might know simply just putting your cursor over whichever unit you want to select and pressing the left mouse button boom there you go you can just hit the unit you can hit also the banner right here or their unit card down here if you so desire now in order to take that to step number two what we can do is we can take our left mouse button hold it down and drag a box over the units that we want to select and you can select as, any, as, as many units as you want. And we can select, you know, the whole map here. Whatever you want to do, whichever units that you are looking to address, that is actually a very quick and handy way to, to do that, especially when you have your whole army going in one direction and then you want to peel off a little uh, sub-faction of them. Well, just simply pull them in there, maybe even put them in a group, and then send them over with the click of a right mouse button. If we wanted to be a little more specific with the units that we select, what we can do is, is we can first left-click on whatever unit we want to start with, and and then hold down the controlled key and go select the other units that you'd wish to control as well. So let's say we want to do this one over here, this one over here, this one over here. Obviously, we wouldn't have been able to do that with the box. And then we can let go of the control key. We're still selecting all of them and tell them to just do with them as you will, I suppose. Uh, have them go over here because, well, Maybe it's a mystery, actually. You can also do that uh, by just use, by just looking at the unit cards down here or selecting them like this. Uh, again, same sort of thing. Hold down control, boom, boom, boom. And you guys find some gold over there. Now, we, if we want to select a bunch of units that are in the same area on the unit cards, what we can do is we can select the first unit and hold down shift and then select the last unit that we want in that selection. So for this case, I just want to select all of the swordsmen. Pretty cool. And we can go issue them a command, which we'll get into more details there later. But that only works if they are right next to each other on the unit card. So th this is really something that you're going to use perhaps uh, mostly on the uh, you know on the setup deployment screen. But when you get into battle, mm, it's there's there's usually better faster ways of kind of addressing that. So let's say we want to select the whole army, and we you know they're all over the map. We have no idea where they are, and the best way to do that is to press Control and A, and there we go we have selected all the different army units. But let's say that we wanted to get a little bit more specific and just select perhaps the infantry. Well, there is another great command for that. All you have to do is hold down control, press I, and now we selected all of our infantry ground troops, including the general as well, by the way, if he is on the ground. Now, of course, if he's uh, flying around on a mount, he's gonna be considered different. But as far as this one goes right here, very simple way to, to select all of, you know, all of your ground troops in just one fell swoop. Let's say we wanted to just select our missile units. Well, we have a command for that as well. Just hold down control, press M, and there we go. All of our missiles, in this case crossmen, are selected absolutely beautifully. Let's say we wanted to select only cavalry units. Can you guess which key it is? <laughs> well, well, it's control and C. And that'll select our two units of cavalry right here. And of course, what about the artillery? Well, if we want to select the artillery, simply press Control and B, and that will take care of that. We have one unit right here. Lovely. And that will lead us on into section number two. Grouping. So this is actually one of the more important sections to really figure out how to put together and keep together those really, really beautiful formations. And first and foremost, the command itself to put a unit into a group or multiple units into a group, because that's what a group is, is uh, 
take whichever units that you want to do. You can drag or click on their unit cards down here. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll select these three units. And let's say I want to have them in a group so that they act together. Well, I can press Control and G. That's going to lock them into group number one. There's two types of groups, locked and unlocked. It's denoted by the little uh, padlock pod padlock right there. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, if it's locked, then they will literally maintain exactly their formation as best as they can. Um, as they were when you locked that group. If you unlock it, then you can actually reassess them so or, or reformulate them, so I could do something like that. Okay, also, when assigning a group, you can assign whatever number that you want. If you if you have OCD like me, then, then you can do it like this for, if for whatever reason this makes sense. So instead of group number one, I press Control G and then whatever number that I want all the way up to, I believe, well, all the numbers on your uh, number key. So we can do Control G nine, for example, and that makes them group number nine. If you don't denote that, then it'll just go to the next you know number in order okay so this next piece of information is only applicable on this uh on, on this deployment screen right here and it's actually really useful for getting uh those nice orderly formations in kind of a roundabout way i suppose but uh but basically let's say that we wanted to have a very specific formation where uh the swordsmen right here are going to be in the inside maintaining the front line and then we're going to have spears on the flanks so what we can do is, is we can order the unit cards in a way that would reflect that. So something like this, so there's two on the left side, two on the right side, and then four swordsmen right in the middle. If we were to take these guys now, uh, highlight them all using the shift and uh, click, and then press control G and get them into a group, and then unlock that group, and that, that's actually a really key point right there. The, the group needs to be unlocked. Then when we go back to set them, say in a frontline situation right here, they will actually line up in exactly the way that their unit cards are. So we have two spears right here, we have four swords in the middle, and two spears over here. And then we can lock it. You can just press Control G or you can click the uh, padlock and that'll put them into place. Okay, so what is the advantage of actually even locking a group besides just it looking pretty? Well, well, actually quite a few. So in the way that the game works, if we start this battle right here, we can get an idea of how this is gonna, I, I think it's just better with examples. So. Let's say I'm using this group, the one that we just made as group number one. I select them all, it's locked up, and if I and if I suggest for them to move, or not suggest, but command them to move, <laughs> kind of like slave mentality, they will all move at the same pace in a in their formation and they will not break that formation so this is useful when you want to get the army going together not with like one unit that's faster than another like getting to the destination first and foremost this is going to be a little more obvious if we were to like include uh this uh this cab unit over here in fact we'll just pull them into the group we can do it like that you can just arrange the unit card in there or or i could have just controlled g again for that and uh, they'll come over there now, and now that they're a part of the group, well, <laughs> well, they'll be a little bit slower. But what we can do is, I want to demonstrate now that if they, if it was not a locked group, if it was not a locked group, they're actually going to move at a different pace. So the the calves should naturally get there faster, and we'll actually have them run to just demonstrate this. So and they won't really hold their same formation as they had before, as you can see. So this is going to be a little bit of you know j just another contingency. And say I have an unlocked group like this and wanted to go attack the enemy. Well, let's see what happens. If I click on one of the enemies, they're all gonna zero in on the same exact enemy. I mean, we're in a little bit of a battle right now, Norska putting the pressure on, I suppose. But as you can see, they're all converging on exactly that unit. So is that like a really good command to be issuing here? No, absolutely not, in fact. It's actually, a, a well, usually gonna be a very bad idea to have like, you know, multiple units like this converge on that one unit while their whole army can just, you know, go around our sides and, and, uh, and flank us rather easily as you can see them, well, <laughs> lose their formation here. So that's really why we want to do something like this, which I'll, which I'll demonstrate with the back line right here. Let's get these guys maybe out in front. And what I want to show here is, is I'm going to get these guys and this cav unit right here. This is like not obviously the most bet this is not the best army setup right now i'm just i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes here um, but what we'll do is we'll wait come on guys get into get into order there we'll put everyone in in order and what i'll do now is i'll put these guys into their own group and when when it's a locked group if i issue the attack command you'll notice they'll all go forwards and attack the best target as they kind of like pick it up um, let's put this onto regular mode now as well so all these guys are going to pick up different targets now, whichever one's you know most relevant to their to their current position. So you'll see them pick up naturally 
all of the like what you would assume is the right people in the line typically speaking not all it doesn't always work that well it doesn't always work that well and perhaps we could do another demonstration in just a second okay so we see what has happened if the group is unlocked and goes and tries to attack they all kind of converge on the same target or they lose their formations a little bit but there's actually another more clever way of doing this and what makes a really attractive grouping here is that we can get everyone kind of nice and well situated to start off hold on let's put um, a cab unit right here this is obviously not gonna be like you know the best <laughs> the best front line of all time or, or even like a workable formation but what I just want to show is is we will put them into a group and will issue the attack command for the enemy here and you'll notice that instead of them all converging on the same target they all get their same pathing which we can actually bring back up by pressing spacebar and see exactly where they're going so they're going to auto pick up whichever unit is most relevant to them as they get closer and closer now i would say as you get closer and closer you know it is a good idea to kind of dial it back in and select them one by one and make sure that you get the matchups that you want but if you do leave it unattended it will do its best to kind of find the most applicable unit to go after there is another major hotkey that is really important here let's say i wanted to stop the army uh we'll, pr we'll press uh, backspace for that and let's say let's say there's a scenario where you know somehow there's enemies coming from this direction right behind us you know we're obviously facing this way but they're coming from us from you know from us behind like maybe it's a maybe it's a sneaky cavalry charge but what we can do is to about face really quickly is instead of like re-clicking these guys over here with the right drag is press j and what they'll do is is they will turn around and then we'll get ready for that that is an incredibly useful tool by the way and also what can be done is like let's say um let's say i'm gonna go out and like skirmish with my shot cap here which maybe maybe not the best idea right now but i just want to show for demonstration purpose let's say i'm just going to charge them into the front line because I, I feel like there's a an opening there and you know let's say at the at the last second i decide it's a bad idea well well this same j key does a really good job of keeping us safe we'll actually suggest right now okay day boom and they're going to stop and turn around and avoid the enemies so if you do need a quick way to kind of like get your units out of harm's way that's actually a really 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 key uh key <laughs> for uh, or hot key maybe better said Alrighty, now moving on to section number three, the fun stuff, I suppose you could say. And everything in this section is going to be both applicable to singular unit types and also uh, groups and locked groups, of course. But I do want to have one major contingency here. So we'll start it off like this. Let's select everyone, get them into a group. And I'm going to issue the command to just move forward. In this sense, all you have to do is uh, make sure that everyone's selected, press one so that the whole group is there, and then just click right there because who knows what could be over there and they'll walk more importantly in unison and maintain their formation the whole way you'll notice that the cavalry and the slower units are all moving at about the same speed and they maintain that all the way through now to to demonstrate what happens when you go the other way if i were to unlock the group as you can see now and just tell them to to go down here like, kind of feel like a slave driver right now just walk up and march down <laughs> um it, but now you'll notice that when i issue the command to go over here they will kind of lose their formation and they'll go at their own pace so the faster units will get there faster the slower units will get there obviously slower and they'll lose their space and they'll lose their formation on the march down there as well so that that does need to be um, differentiated when you're selecting groups, you know, locked or unlocked. As you as you probably are on default, it's very likely that whenever you issue the command with just a simple right click, they're gonna likely walk on over there. The re the the way that you'll know that is looking at the bottom left hand side over here. You'll see that there is no uh, border around the the unit toggle speed, as you kind of see for the for the grouping right here, and also the units themselves on top of the unit card is just like a a one play button. If if they are running, it's going to be two play buttons. And there's a couple ways to do this. So first and foremost, if you double click, if you double click, they will automatically run. So now you see two play 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 buttons. Can't speak English. And um, and down here you see that it's you know it's encompassed as well. Um, and so that's the default for that. You can also press the R key to toggle run and toggle not run. There you go. And a big thing with that, and I'll do another video on sort of why and when you do that, but uh, the reason why you'd want them to walk most of the time if they're not in, in danger of like immediate battle, or they're not, it's not like a huge issue to be, you know, fast is because it'll save their vigor and uh, they'll remain fresh, right? Which means that they are going to fight a lot better. Anyways, moving on, if we were to command or issue a command to have the whole group, uh, let's actually get them back in a group. 
There we go. And let's have them go uh, all the way up here. And let's say we were, you know, we were running over there, like we really want to get over there. Um, but like right in the midst of it, we say, oh, there's something else going on. So I need to stop and do something else. Well, a very quick way to stop is issue the halt command by pressing space. Sorry, not space, but backspace. There we go. <laughs> there it is. And you can do you can do either that or hit the uh, or hit the halt button down here. Either one of them will do the same. It'll it'll stop them exactly where they are though. So it can be a little bit of awkward. But if you need to stop everyone and just issue another command to reform right here, like let's say the enemy starts charging at you and you're like, wait, I'm. Hey man, not in order right now. <laughs> you know, you can you can you can reassess everyone like that uh, relatively easily. So we'll do something like this. Here we go get a nice formation going on once again. Very nice and orderly. Okay, all right. So let's say that we put together another formation. Um, I'm gonna do like a very small one right here just so that we can demonstrate very easily. Get these guys on over here. Uh, run over there so that we can get there faster. Maybe even speed up the <laughs> the uh, the game as well. There we go. All right, running over, and there should be one more unit. There you go. Come on, stragglers, get on over there. <sighs> Ain't nobody got time for this. And <laughs> what we'll do now is we'll do a little bit of uh, unit commands with how we can, um, you know, march them around and and re and reformate them essentially. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a, a group out of these four. Uh, and actually, let's get them nice and wide first. There we go. Have them run over there. All right, cool. Okay, beautiful. So let's say we want them exactly like this and we lock them into a group. So they're gonna be group number two. And let's say we wanna move them in this current formation, meaning that we're gonna move them so that they do not lose their current posture. Well, the best way to do that is to hold Alt and then use the left mouse button and you can do something like this and you can move them wherever. And so let's say, let's just go over there guys or go or, or hold it down over here and go over here guys just, just find your way over there um that is actually quite useful in again keeping those nice orderly formations which you typically spend a lot of time putting together <laughs> what we can also do is we can use the arrow keys for uh, for tiny movements as well like let's say um let's say we just want to issue the command to to march forwards we can just select this unit go up and they'll just move slightly up. So very, very tiny movements, but you know, can be useful if you just need to kind of close a gap or something like that very quickly. You know, again, you know, that's what you're gonna do there. Move to the right, there you go. Move to the left, move back down, hokey pokey all around. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> um, but it is quite fun and you can you know you can obviously do more as well you know something like that or just hold it down and uh, and that'll that'll get the same job done and we'll just put them back all right come on come back to home fellas okay now what do we want to do now let's do something that's actually really 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 useful especially with cavalry so I'll, I'll pull this cav unit over here and what we'll do is we'll actually draw a path for them to walk or run, you know, whichever whichever that they're defaulted to. But essentially, let's say that I want to choose a cavalry unit to go flank around, as typically people do. And uh, we're going to go around the right-hand side over here. Let's say that there's a bunch of enemies kind of where these where this group over here is. Well, what we could do is to kind of sidestep them is hold down the shift key, keep the keep the shift key held down, and then use the right the right mouse button, and then draw a path like this, and they will go in a bunch of circles <laughs> it's great it's amazing and we can have them run too as well and there you go you they you know they will follow that path you can also do this multiple units as well but typically you know it's going to be small uh small units or selections of small units that you're going to do something like that with really helps with um you know with with kind of like freeing up mental ram for doing other things while issuing a more complex cam uh command with something like this um and then we can also do something else that's pretty cool we can drag and right click our formations. Now, I forgot to mention this one, but I do have it in here uh, in my notes. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm thorough with this. So let's say, you know, we want to select a couple units right there. They're unlocked. Okay, can't be in a locked group. Uh, can't be in an unlocked group or just a random selection of troops. Hold down the right mouse button and draw your formation. You can make them nice and wide. You can make them really thin as they are right now. You can make them kind of in the middle like that you get the idea you probably know this one take your unit or again you could do this with the group as well and we'll do it with group hold down control and now use the right mouse button to rotate your unit and they'll do something like this now if you have multiple units uh and they're in a group like let's say these guys over here group number two that we had before again hold down <clears throat> hold down control and just rotate them around 
with the right mouse button and there you go so you can get them in a nice you know keep that nice formation but just kind of about face them which we actually have another command for a little bit later which is actually a really really important one anyways okay moving through it now um if we want to move the army in formation we can do the alt plus left mouse button command which is going to be something like this or we can do the same group over here so hold down alt and use the left mouse button actually we already got this one so i'm repeating myself here apologies for that um, more importantly, we can now reposition them if we hold down alt and then left click. So if we hold down alt and then left click right here, we can reposition them immediately. Very, 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 very simply without kind of going through that. Anyways, moving on through it now, uh, we can also use the alt plus control plus left click command to rotate the formation as well. So we do alt control and left click and that'll rotate them in place though so they won't move around to a different area as we did with the other command which was just alt plus uh plus left mouse button um but it is control alt and left mouse button that will rotate them in place so very important again as well and you know makes things really really easily uh easy if you just need like need to make small minute changes with your lines something like this you know they you know they will essentially maintain that space and they can address the current threatening situation coming towards them a little bit easier Alrighty, section number four the last section let's now talk about all the different modes that we can force our army into as well as different viewing experiences as well which actually makes for a really nice cinematic experience anyways most importantly uh if a unit is a missile unit or has multiple modes of attack whether they have like a bow and arrow and also a sword or or something you know some variation of that you can make them only attack in melee by either well first off let's select a a crossbowman unit we can either press the f key which will make sure that they highlight the melee mode only or we can just click it right there both equally simple the prop or the thing with this is is that it will make it so that that unit will only will only use melee so they will not shoot any more arrows they won't be doing any of that and this is also applicable to um to especially uh, skirmish uh, cav units as well that will have some sort of a ranged missile uh, weapon but maybe you you don't want them to necessarily use their range weapon you want them to actually go charge and help out somewhere else well putting them into melee mode will force them to let go of their range unit or sorry their ranged weapon and just use their charging capabilities which is actually quite useful especially when you come into maybe some of the later parts of the games and you feel like you need some something versatile which can certainly uh, fill in that spot in that particular situation anyways now moving on to guard mode okay so this one's something that i really don't see people talk about all that often but it's really important actually so especially for the defensive players which i don't really consider myself one of them but i know that there's a lot out of there especially from playing some some online battles and guard mode okay so first and foremost how do you initiate it well it's down here we can just talk we can just toggle it like this and what it does is is that it essentially causes that unit to lock down that area meaning that if they get engaged into a fight if they get engaged into melee and then they beat that melee unit or, or or whatever unit for that matter and the unit starts to break and run away they will not chase it they will actually remain right here and uh, nice and steady and and hold their ground so it's really good for keeping formations especially if you're you know intent on playing that defensive like style and you want to make sure that you know your lines hold and you don't get overextended that's actually incredibly useful to employ for your front line and you know and, and also elsewhere as well moving on now skirmish mode so this is also again only applicable to units that have ranged capabilities uh, such as these crossbows right here so first let me explain what skirmish is skirmish essentially means that they will attempt to run away if the enemy gets too close to them if like a threat gets too close to them they will stop firing they'll stop what they're doing and run away until they feel safe enough to to start firing on the enemy again now this actually sounds good in theory for like for like all situations yeah, especially especially for the newer players out there myself included i definitely used to think this way but if you want to hold a nice steady formation you don't you probably don't want that and if you are going to have your archers which i would i would really not suggest doing this to begin with but if you are going to have them like like tucked right behind your front line like i'm doing right now very 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 close well if the enemy gets towards your front line even though they technically are protected by the front line they will actually waste some time by running backwards until they have a decent amount of space and then they'll resume firing again until the enemy gets Gets close to them again but 
in the case of a skirmish unit that's actually intended to to operate as a skirmish unit meaning that it's um meaning that like in the early stages of the game typically it's going to go out and harass the enemy army as a kind of approach you know maybe pull them into doing something silly that they can capitalize on um then yes it can be it can be quite useful because it'll help your microwing capabilities as you can put that on you know focus on something else for a little bit of time understand that you know your units are going to more or less of try their best to avoid um you know try Try, try, uh, try their best to avoid uh, well any uh, any other enemy threats, of course, and they can handle themselves for a little bit of time. Although I would say keep an intentful eye on them because you never know you never know what the computer is going to do at the end of the day. Anyways, moving on to the next one fire at will so this is again applicable only for range and artillery units that is this one right here fire at will and usually most people are going to keep that on no matter what however there are going to be a lot of situations where you actually don't want to keep that on because you do have limited ammo you don't want you want to make all your arrows count and there are going to be situations where it's just not a very good use of your you know of, of you know of your ammunition in order to uh, in order to well try and, and attempt a shot for example if you are going against or, or going up up into a siege battle and there's a bunch of enemy units on the walls and you want to hit them well it's actually not gonna be the best idea to try to have your crossbows or, or any bows for that matter try to hit that unit because the wall is gonna protect them from a lot of that a lot of those arrows so you're gonna waste a lot more arrows and ammunition than you would have if you would have just had them not fire and wait for for them to get some sort of advantageous position and then go ahead and fire there's also situations where perhaps um, you know you have have a disadvantageous uh, position or there's some sort of weird uh, terrain that you're dealing with that makes you know your arrows not count as much or well not count as much as maybe the wrong terminology but they're just they're not going to hit as much is what I'm trying to say and so in those situations you want to click that off as well Let's conserve that ammo and then save it for when they got nice clean shots typically on the sides or backs of enemies that's where they're going to count the most uh, also it can be situations where maybe you you're afraid of like friendly fire you know maybe you have some artillery units that are are pounding the enemy but the enemy is starting to get closer and closer to your front lines and now you kind of run the risk of you know firing on your own units which is <laughs> really bad for your morale and also pretty bad just in general so so the best thing to do in those situations is either retarget something that's further away or in the meantime uh untoggle that fire at will and that'll stop them from firing and stop them from also wasting their ammunition which is again limited anyways Moving on to the next one. So this one also, you know, I, I, didn't, I wasn't really sure where I should put this next one, but uh, I decided to put it in this section right here. And that is uh, canceling an already made order or, or an order in the making. So uh, let's say, you know, I have these guys right here and I just wanted to go off to the right hand side over here or, or, or I want to reformulate over here. But then right as I'm doing this, I've, I think to myself, oh, crown, what the, what the fuck are you doing, man? I don't want to do that anymore. What you can do to cancel that without, you know, just letting go of the right mouse button is to press escape. Boom. Done. It, like it never happened. Just like magic. So also very, very useful um, just in case, you know, in case if you like misclick or something like that. Um, okay, cool. Now we can talk about some more map related type things. First and foremost, if you want to toggle the, um, the tactical view, press the tab key. That'll bring you up here. You'll be able to get a bird's eye view of the battlefield, which is really helpful when you get into like these very convoluted battle scenes um, this is a good way to get a bird's eye view of what's going on where what units are where what they're dealing with and you'll also be able to see well if there were enemies here you'd be able to see them as well and you can press tab once again to toggle out of that there you go and on top of that if you want to go to cinematic mode take some take some beautiful pictures because this game is absolutely stunning uh visually that is press k press k and you can get down like this and man i mean this is just this is fucking art man is what it is i mean jesus christ look at the background too wow man it is uh truly impressive truly truly impressive okay also one last one and this one also is uh, is pretty damn cool for the people who uh who enjoy the viewing experience and that is the cinematic view to to enable the cinematic view i need to look at my keyboard once again for this one press the insert key boom that's going to put you right on whatever unit you have selected. And it's actually really cool because when you do watch them kind of march up to the enemy or if they get engaged in battle, you're going to really feel like it's movie mode time. And it makes for it makes for a good viewing experience, at least in my opinion, when you got a few extra seconds, pretty damn nice. And also, if you're to do that on artillery, for example, so I'm going to select my artillery over here, press insert. 
There we go. It'll actually let you aim it in first person, which is really, really cool. I really like this feature. And for example, you know, you just aim, I don't know, let's aim up here and fire away. And then you actually get to see the cannonball going. Maybe not the best visuals there, but it's, it's, it's satisfying nonetheless, man. Have a little bit of fun with it. Anyways, I believe that is actually all of my notes. I believe that that is everything. I think we've covered maybe 30-ish now. So these are the 30 most important um, uh, army movement tips and tricks that I have. Uh, I hope that this has helped you. If you have any more that I missed, please leave in the, in the comment section below and, I'll, and at a later date, I will do an updated version of this video. But for now, this, uh, this, is, this is it, my most comprehensive guide that I can come, up with, come, can come up with at this moment in time. I hope this one serves you well and I will see you in the next one.